Uh, Dr. Mazafarian, in your uh, splendid lecture this morning, you really made the point that uh, you know we have had an over-focus on the fat content of the diet regarding its impact on, on obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes. Could you comment, elaborate on, on those points, please? Yeah, so I think that you know the real critical issues for uh, obesity and diabetes and, and related metabolic risk factors are, are, are twofold. The, the, the first thing is you know consuming the right amount of calories or energy balance. And the second critically important thing is consuming the right type Types of, of foods independently of, of calories. And for both of those uh, different things, dietary quantity and dietary quality, the, the types of fat have been really overemphasized. And uh, you know, energy balance is, is probably uh, very slightly or not at all affected by percent energy from fat, percent energy from protein, percent energy from carbohydrate. It's, it's much more related to the types of foods that, that one consumes. Now, uh, would you therefore elaborate on the fact that the American Art Association has recently moved from, a tec from technical recommendations on, on, on uh, diets, such as micronutrient composition of the diet, to more food-oriented recommendations? Your thoughts? Yeah, so you know, a lot of bodies are, are recognizing this work, and, and I think that growing evidence in the last really decade has, has highlighted uh, the uh, unhelpful nature of some of the prior recommendations. And so the USDA, you know, in the most in the last update dropped its recommendation of dietary fat less than 30 and it moved up 25 to 35. Uh, the AHA has done the same thing. I'm, I'm involved with the WHO and the WHO is also going to have that recommendation. Um, so I think food, a food-based dietary guide is really what's critical and the AHA is moving in that direction. And so the, it's critical for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you know, people understand it much better. It's much easier for people uh, when you say eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and fish, they know what those things are than to say eat X percent of calories uh, from this or X percent of calories from that. The other thing that's critically important is that you know food industry is incredibly smart, incredibly nimble, and if you give nutrient-based or you know composition-based guidelines, they can create a processed food that meets those guidelines. And you know the, the, the processed food is unlikely to have these same benefits. And so you know, you can't game a food-based recommendation. If it's fruits and vegetables, then it has to be a fruit or a vegetable. And, and so you know, what we need to do is create a, a, a new system where food industry can make profits selling whole foods rather than having to sell processed foods to make their profits. In line with those food-oriented recommendations, could you comment yeah. also on these, uh, you know, uh, sugar-sweetened beverages and their contribution to total calorie intake, spontaneous energy intake? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think that there's growing evidence for sugar-sweetened beverages being very important. Um, certainly, you know, looking at ecologic studies or, or cross-sectional studies, the, the increase, for example, in the United States, the increase in calories uh, is mostly been beverage calories, and about 60% of that has been sugar-sweetened beverages. About 25% has been alcohol uh, in the last couple of decades. So, so you could explain most of the obesity epidemic in the United States just from the intake of sugar-sweetened beverages. Now, does that mean it's definitive, it's causal? No, but it's clearly important. And in, in children, you know, it's, it's clearly important and been associated with, with obesity. So I think that sugar-sweetened beverages are, you know, uh, at least probably uh, a, a cause of the obesity epidemic in, in the United States and many other countries, and, and maybe some would say convincingly. But I think it's also important that it's one cause, and we don't want to uh, make it a Band-Aid, uh, eliminate vending machines in schools, for example, uh, when 75% of sugar-sweetened beverages are consumed at home, and there's many, many other processed foods, potatoes, rice, bread, uh, that are consumed, and so we don't want to just only focus on sugar-sweetened beverages. So I think it's it's a probably a key component, especially in children uh, right now, but it's not the only component. And in closing now for the busy uh, family doctors, what would be your uh, recommendation in terms of things to watch for in, in, in their patient in terms of dietary habits? Yeah, so you know the, the real key, key things for dietary habits for the practicing physician is or, or one, ask about them, because if you don't ask about them, you'll never know what your patient's eating. And then ask about them regularly so that you can follow them. And, and it doesn't have to be complicated. So the key thing is to focus on foods and really ask about five or six key foods that I think are important. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fish, and, and nuts are probably what, what I would highlight. And if people are consuming those and you emphasize for them to consume those things, they'll naturally eat less of the processed foods and the sugar-sweetened beverages and so forth. Um, if, the, if the physician is a little bit more time and a little bit more savvy, he can then get into avoid the packaged foods, the processed foods, the sugar-sweetened beverages, and so forth. But if they just get the, the eat 
eat fruits, vegetables, fish, nuts, uh, whole grains, those five things, you know, a lot of other things will, will naturally improve in the diet.